Hi everyone. Welcome to College Algebra. Today we're going to talk about interval notation. And I like to start here because mathematics is really a language and it's important that we can communicate in this language. So understanding the notation and some of the common symbols is really important. In addition, some of my students say they get scared or intimidated by some of the notation. So I'm hoping that this video will help us get more comfortable and realize that the notation isn't that scary. It's just a way to help us communicate. So interval notation is gonna be one of the notations that we will use most frequently in college algebra. And it is just a notation that helps us describe a range of values. So it's a way to communicate. So before we go into interval notation, it's important that we know the basic inequality symbols. So we have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to as our main inequality symbols. These are our ways of communicating when something's not equal to a value. So x isn't equal to 5, but maybe x is less than 5. So less than and greater than, both of these inequality symbols, we call these non-inclusive symbols. And we say they're non-inclusive because they're not going to include the value. So what I mean by that, for example, if I want x to be less than five, the value five does not satisfy this statement. So if x has to be less than 5, then 5 will not work. We do not want to include 5. If we wanted to include 5, then we would use a different symbol, one of the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to symbols. So these symbols here are considered inclusive because if I want to include 5, again, for example, then I would have x is less than or equal to five if five is going to be included in this range of values. So these are the four that we're gonna use most often. Now looking at this table I have for you, there's another notation that is also popular, which is often called set builder notation. And I'm not gonna use that notation as much in our class, but I'm gonna show it to you here so that we can then practice writing interval notation and also graphing these number sets on a number line. So let's start with the first statement here. And in mathematics, these are called curly brackets. Curly brackets are these symbols here, these curly brackets. So the way we read this statement, we have, we have x here, and then you see this vertical line. That vertical line means such that. So this statement says x such that x is greater than 2. So why don't you make a little note that this little vertical line means such that. So that means we're looking for all the values of x such that x is greater than 2. So we want all the numbers greater than 2. So let's graph this on the number line for starters. And I don't require that you put all the tick marks. I'm just going to put one tick mark, and I'm going to call that positive 2. And then we want to decide which direction the arrow needs to point. So if x needs to be a value greater than 2, then the arrow would point to the right because the numbers greater than 2 lie to the right of 2. Now, this is a greater than symbol, which is non-inclusive. We do not want to include 2. So therefore, we would use a parenthesis on the number line. And the reason I like you to see this on the number line is because this is the number one way to help you transition to interval notation. We read our graphs from left to right. So if I look at what I have highlighted in red going from left to right, it reads a parenthesis two, and then going far to the right forever means we're going to infinity. So this would be from two to infinity. And that means I want all of the values that are greater than two. Now, some textbooks will get a little bit more fancy with their notation, and I don't want this to scare you if you see it, so I'm going to include it here. You'll see some textbooks that have this kind of interesting symbol here, this funky looking E, kind of looks like a capital E, but it's curved. And this is just your element symbol. This reads X is an element of this interval. So if you see that, don't be scared of that. That's just saying X is an element of this interval. 
And I'll mention one reason why it is good to write that element symbol, even though you don't have to, because if I give you, let's say, the interval of values between 2 and 7, it would be written in interval notation like this, parentheses 2, comma 7. But that could be very easily confused with the coordinate where x is equal to 2 and way up here, you know, y equals 7. So when you see just the parentheses 2, comma 7, if I'm the reader, I don't know if that is a coordinate or if it's an interval. But if I write x is an element of that interval, then I'm being very clear that this is not an ordered pair, but rather an interval of x values. So that is one benefit of writing the fancy x with the element symbol. So let's move on to our next set builder notation. This one says all values of x such that x is less than or equal to 2. So we're still looking at 2 on our number line, but this time we want all of the numbers that are less than or equal to 2. So my arrow would point to the left, and because it's a less than or equal to symbol, that's inclusive, so I would use a bracket. A bracket means I want to include 2. And then if I read this shaded region from left to right, it reads from negative infinity to 2 with a bracket. One other quick note regarding infinity and negative infinity, we will always use parentheses on those because they are not actually finite values. They're not numbers. So infinity and negative infinity will always get parentheses. Moving on to our next set builder notation. So this one here says all values of x such that and if I read it from left to right, it says negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. This is called a compound inequality. But this part here really is saying I want x to be any value in between negative 1 and 2. So on my number line, I need to plot negative 1 as well as positive 2. And then I want all of the numbers in between negative 1 and positive 2. So I will be highlighting in between. And then it has a less than or equal to sign with the negative 1. So the negative 1 will get a bracket. But the less than symbol with the 2 means we do not want to include 2. So 2 will get a parenthesis. So this means we would like all of the x values that are on the interval, bracket, negative 1, 2, parenthesis. And that's what interval would, notation would look like in this case. Then there's some unique cases that we're going to encounter where x can be any number, any real number. So that means any value on the number line is fair game. So if I were highlighting, that means I would highlight the entire number line, all real numbers. And we would read that from left to right. x is an element of the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then our last scenario, this one here, where we have two curly brackets, but there's nothing inside, that's called the empty set. And that would represent the case where we don't have any values. So I'm not going to highlight anything on the number line. And if we were going to opt for a different symbol for that, an alternative for that is the zero with the slash through it, the null set. Some people call this the null set rather than the empty set. And that's another alternative way of communicating that no value works. Some of our equations might be no solution, and you could write no solution with either of these notations. So there's an introduction to interval notation, and I hope it's a little less scary now.